Hi guys, how are you? So you've probably guessed by the title of this video, a real world review of my giant TCR Advanced. Now, I'll say this before we get into this, I'm not a pro reviewer, I'm just a cyclist, an average cyclist at that. So take that as you will. Before I bought this, I had a 20 year old titanium airborne. It was a beautiful thing and I thought it was the best thing since sliced bread, just utterly wonderful. And then this appeared. So basically, how long have I had it? It's now end of August. I got it just before Christmas. I've done around about ish five thousand miles on it. And I thought I'll give you my thoughts because there doesn't seem to be much in the way of honest reviews. Um, obviously, you get giant advertised reviews, and you get the ones on like Trustpilot and stuff like that. So I thought I'd give you what I like about it, what things I would change, what's potentially gone wrong, what have I had to change, stuff like that. So, long story short, it is a medium long, medium large, whichever you like to call it, TCR Advanced Pro 1. I'm going to put a list of the spec from Giant's website here, so you can have a little run through frame itself is wonderful not a single issue at all as a bike i've utterly loved it it's not been without issues there's been a couple but i'll come to them in a minute and there are things that i would change for future but again that's not necessarily their fault it's a me thing being a newbie to lots of lots of things so what do you get for your money for retail, the £4,800-ish. Granted, I got a bit of help from Giant, thank you very much again, in that they couldn't be a sponsor of mine at the time. Don't get me wrong, I'm going to be trying again for the future because I've got other stuff to come. So, medium large frame. From the factory, without pedals, it comes in at 7.2 kilos. So it comes with, it's full carbon, hydraulic disc brakes, Ultegra Mechanical R8000 with, importantly for me, uh, twin-sided Power Pro power meters, which for me have been utterly transformational in my cycling. Uh, yeah, it, yeah. If you're wanting to train properly, power meter is the one thing that you need to have to train properly. And for it to come with that, it's just been utterly wonderful. It's been perfect from the box. I've charged it, I think, four times, uh, the, the power meters, because they charge via USB. So what has it been like to live with? It's been fantastic. The fact that it's carbon, it's just a very, very stiff frame. Uh, I can put, and I have put, 1,250 watts through this. I couldn't do that on my old bike because there was so much flex in it. Sorry, neighbors putting the bottles out. Um, yeah, the titanium frame with shallow rim braked wheels used to flex all over the place when I used to try and sprint and I could feel the whole thing wobbling underneath me. This, none of it. I actually get the back end fishtailing around a bit. I noticed that yesterday I did a about a thousand watt quick sprint up a hill in the big gear and it was dancing around under me. But, ah, that's me, I lean a bit too far forward on some of these so yeah, I like another back end. Uh, what have I added? I've added these I've gone with SL cleats. I'm probably going to upgrade these. I bought the 105s at the time because I'm a bit of a cheapskate. Um, but as you can probably see now, I've gone full gold chain baller for 65 quid. It's KMC 11 SL Superlight, and I'm on my third chain already. I'm going through these every 1500 miles because they've got hollow pins. And. You know, I've not been easy on this bike, let's be honest. It went through a very tough week in the summer. Uh, right, so things that I love about it, obviously... Oh, what else does it come with? Sorry. Um, we've got the giant 42 tubeless wheels. My first time on tubeless, I have no complaints. I've had one proper puncture that you saw on my challenge. It's self-sealed. It's still got a massive gut hole in it, and there's one in the rear as well. Still working perfectly. Granted, the front one has had a puncture repair uh, patch on the inside 
but that's I resealed everything this week and I went and did 70 miles yesterday so that was all fine all good um, the tires have been fantastic they're probably due a change to be honest um, they grip well they go around corners nicely uh, as you know or I don't know I'm a full knobhead downhill and I've got every confidence in this thing in this thing I've not reached its limit yet I've had a few moments my own problems but it handles beautifully it's, it really is on rails um, I have changed the saddle the original giant saddle was the contact that came with it which is comfortable but if you didn't see in my challenge it's too wide for me um, <laughs> really should have done it before and I'm an idiot but I've got unusually narrow sit bones at 95mm and the contact saddle was a 145 so it was way too wide so I've swapped it for this S-Works power saddle it's carbon fibre see there it's a, it's a lovely thing was damn expensive worked out £1.50 a gram uh, but it's narrow it's 130 wide and from the drives I've had on it uh, I can't remember how far I've done about five, 600 miles on that saddle and it fits like sitting comparatively on a cloud uh, I've added a ass saver as well trying to save on weight but not get a mucky ass uh, what else have I added I've added these Elite Vivo uh, Vico Carbon bottle cages now they are tight they are really tight I went for them for the same reason as the reasons why I love disc brakes now stuff like the Fred Witten downhill on terrible terrible road surfaces we get a lot of that up here in the north you probably get it where you are as well um, and tight cages mean the bottles ain't gonna jump out and the hydraulic disc brakes means I can be a bit more confident into later braking say a bit more I mean I can't get much more confident with the corners others will vouch for me on that um, yeah the brakes have been a bit noisy occasionally but I'm assuming that's because I've just got grease or fingerprints or something or just road grime onto them um, the overall look um, one thing that I must say that I don't like see being honest cables now well not muck not really about that should have gone with di2 or some other wireless to get rid of the cables that was me i was at the top of my budget and it was another x amount of hundreds of pounds to go di2 because i had to change my rear mech cable that was gone after 2000 miles granted a lot of gear changes it was utterly done it was down to the last three strands god knows how it survived i actually noticed yesterday that it was it felt a bit stiff at the at the top but all is well now all feels fine again i am doing some maintenance on this thing i've had a noisy seat post in here now i don't think it was fully greased but eh, these things happen that's fine I'm not blaming anyone the wheels the 42s for me i think it feels around perfect now, i've got a friend of mine who races with races rides with much deeper set lightweights i mean they're crazy they're more expensive than my bike and they're beautiful and they're undoubtedly incredibly fast but with especially this year that we've had it's not really windy today but we've had a really windy year and you can see the bike wandering all over the shop but pound for pound these wheels are to replace i think the front is 500 quid and the rear is 630 and i think between them don't quote me on this i'll try and find the details here they are 1230 grams for the pair pound for pound you cannot even get close to that with most of other brands everyone tells you to go for the zips or lightweights if you've got the cash i don't think you need to i might end up buying another set of these wheels maybe one thing I'm probably going to do, I might going to get myself some some tan wall tyres just for the look. Something else I'm going to change is the height of this. I'll, I would like to get aero bars, but if I'm going to do that, I would have to upgrade to DI2 because I just want to tidy the whole thing up. But for now, as I change, I'm oh, excuse me, I'm becoming a bit more confident further down. I used to sit really upright because I'm used to my old axe bike. I'd be quite quite upright on my bike and I'm becoming a bit lower so what I might do instead of changing the stem for now I might just swap a couple of spacers around 
just to drop it down a little bit more i think that's probably sensible but i'm not going to do it until after this ride or i can test that over october really i'm gonna have a big rest in september but yeah all in all it's been it's been a bloody fantastic bike um i'm fully obviously integrated with it now i say five thousand miles into it and there's been no real problems at all i've had a full service after my challenge and i had to replace i say i they had to replace a headset bearing i can't remember if the bottom bracket bearing got done i didn't get given the list oh, i can't i wish i wish i'd read these things and just instead of just saying thank you and just going and giving the money over but there's not much but yeah we've had a cable replaced here for the rear mech headset bearing you know because sweaty and the saddle's been replaced and i've actually moved it actually a lot further forward than i thought i had sorry back i used to have it set way further forward than that because of upright but i mean yeah it felt good yesterday i might just slip it forward another couple of mil just for comfortability's sake for this uh, this challenge next weekend but i mean let's be honest the last weekend felt good uh, as you can see we're still on original cassette i've cleaned it it's still in really good condition there's no chips no missing anything so i mean i'm used to ultegra my other bike my titanium came with ultegra because the chap i bought it off was a bit of an aficionado and it's exactly the same r8000 range it's um yeah <laughs> But uh, yeah, I'd love to do upgrades in the future, but you just, you never know, do you? Always worry about spending the money unnecessarily when this is so good out of the box. And I don't know how they do it really, because if you want to change and upgrade stuff or buy something or put something together yourself, you just can't do better for the money, I don't think. You really can't. It's been it's been a cracker. It's even even like this, no fraying yet at all. That I've got, you know, there's bits of paint missing here. Let's see the other side here. I've got some. Oh yeah, look at this paint on there. That's my shoes. I'm a size 11. <laughs> um, I've also oh yes, I forgot to say, I dropped it when we we're in Wales. The horrible sound of a bike scraping down a wall. Look at this chips going everywhere all over the shop um, and I scraped here as well it just slid down a sea wall that's utterly my own fault utterly my own fault I was so annoyed when I did it but I'm thinking about getting it painted at some point in orange and white with a blue pinstripe but I need to get that drawn up somehow Hopefully I can find some online frame colour match colour thingy. I think that'll do for now. If there's any other questions you've got about the bike, or there's something I've missed, let me know. But I can't see me changing this for a long time. And I always said that I would use this in the summer and in the crappy weather, of which there's been plenty, and use a titanium for for winter riding and heavy riding i mean i am heavy at the moment but i mean heavy heavy riding um that's not turned a wheel since i bought it which tells you everything you need to know about that it's a bit of a shame really funny enough those tires are, tires are still pumped up on the uh on the titanium but yeah it's been a great bike i would definitely definitely recommend one for the money they're just fantastic so i think that'll do for this one hopefully to give you everything that you need if you're thinking about buying one if you're thinking about getting one new do if you're thinking about getting one second hand get it checked out first to make sure there's no issues with the carbon fiber if it's been dropped or thrown down a hill or <laughs> fallen uh so no issues with this at all it's a silent bike to ride again these days uh and the, the sound of whoa, 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 when you're sprinting on it, it's just yeah right lovely Thank you for watching. I hope this has been informative for you. Might do another one after 10,000 miles. Shall we see? Catch you later.